BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. You're listening to The Archer's Omnibus from BBC Radio 4. This competition Radio Borsuch has got, a new DJ, someone local, live from their home. Going to be essential listening, that is. Good morning from sunny Penny Hassett. I mean, who's going to do that? Got to be someone ancient, because no one else listens. Hit 35, and that's it. Wake up, find yourself listening to Radio Borsuchshire. <sighs> It'll all be warm memories anyway, I know it will. How they had to eat sticks and nettles and then turn their pants into parachutes. Or was it parachutes into pants? Either way, essential listening. Not. It's history. All been and gone. We should be looking to the future. Now I'm stuck with typing out Graham's memories. Thank you, Rory. I blame you for this. Moaning on about having to copy stuff out for Peggy, on and on, till Dad gets the idea I should do the same thing for Gran. Great. Thanks a lot. Just when I get some time out. What's going to happen to me? Never had a blank future before. Is it going to be Felpersham Uni, or what? Who knows? No exams, at least. I will never do my (laughs) A-levels. Mad. Too late to do anything about my assessments. Far too late. Which is why I should be having a break. A well-earned break. Not trotting out boring jobs like this for Gran, or any of the other stuff on the farm. Stand still round here, you get a job, whether you want it or not. And I don't. Problem is, you're always findable on a farm. The plan was, morning, stay in bed, lunch, bit of training for Beth, afternoon, back home for a rest. Couple of big, big sandwiches in front of Netflix. Still, if Gran doesn't go on for too long, maybe I can type it all up a bit sharpish, and then most of the plan can still hold. Right, village shop needs cakes, bridge farm shop needs cakes. Great, that's going to keep me busy. And Fallon's pleased we're still ticking over. So, one big batch today. Half to the village shop, half to Helen. Early afternoon, Helen says. It's best if both lots are done by then. Whatever Helen means by early afternoon. I'm going to make it mean by three o'clock. Well, before that is not possible. Wouldn't be possible at all if I couldn't use the tea room kitchen. Bit peculiar, though, being here on my own. I wonder what George and Kira are up to. They'll have the telly on. Or worse, be mucking about somewhere they just dreamed up. I'm not even going to think about it. You're supposed to keep them bright and cheerful and doing schoolwork. One or the other, maybe. Both's asking too much, especially with George. He can do bright and cheerful when it suits, but him and work don't agree. It was the same for me when I was at school. I didn't make the most of my chances. Didn't even recognise the chances when they came along. Well, that is not happening to George. Except it's hard to make him see that. I tell him, George, this will work out well in the long run, trust me. But he just looks blank. Well, there ain't no long run when you're his age. At least now I got Ez on the case and we're singing the same tune at him. It's not so bad with Kira. With her, the problem's the other mum's. Yummy mummies sending round pictures of them and their kids, all in happy little groups, learning stuff like nobody's business, all laughing and jolly, probably in French or Latin or something. Us doing our little bit, meaning just a little bit better than your little bit. I don't know, though, maybe I'm the same. When Kira does something good, I do kind of like everyone to know about it. No vanilla extract for the sponge, so I'm going to have to find a substitute, or manage without George said he'd do the washing up I left at home. Bet he forgets. Or just sloshes water over it and says it's done. And it keeps coming along, all the clearing up and washing and ironing. Piles get bigger quicker than they get smaller. And Ed's not much help at the moment, not with this daft bet him and Jazz has got on the go, which is all Ed can think of. Sheep shearing. Like it matters who does the most fleeces. Who cares? I don't. I don't care as much as the sheep do, and the sheep don't give a toss. 
Ed does, though. It means a lot to him, so I'm not going to go on about it. Things being so good between us right now. I was going to get him dancing at the VE Day dance. Till it got cancelled. I was really looking forward to that. Right, eggs. Eggs? Oh no, don't tell me. Where's the blooming eggs? Here, Bess. Come here, girl. Sit. Sit, Bess. Good girl. So suddenly, I'm the only one in Ambridge who can deliver eggs. Josh is business, but oh no, Josh can't do it, so I have to take them to the tea room. Emergency egg dash. Bit by bit, my plan for the day is getting shot to pieces. And what about Gran, shoving her notes at me as I'm on my way out? Apparently I have to read them first before I type them out. I really don't. I see a word, I type it. I see another word, I type that. That's how it works. You don't have to know what they say. Still, the eggs are delivered, so mission accomplished. And if I sit here looking at Gran's notes, I'm not back at the farm and they won't be able to spring another job on me. Result. Right. Memories of the War by Jill Archer in old lady handwriting. This will take longer than I thought. I believe it's important to keep the something or other well fed. Flops? Phillies? Family. Important to keep the family well fed. Well, no arguments there. Go Gran on that one. Hmm, then more stuff about the war. I was only a child. I dreaded having to go in the... the air raid shelter in the middle of the night. The puddles and the smell of damp and the sound of bombers in the dark above. Yeah, I suppose so. Sitting there afraid. You would be. You want to be getting on, Bess, eh? Okay, off we go. I love this. The road all quiet. No one else in sight. And Bess running ahead. The way she stops and crouches and looks back at me. And a drop of rum flavouring. Emma's very own vanilla substitute. See if anyone notices. When in doubt, improvise. That's what I always say and it's never let me down. (laughs) No, not much it hasn't. Nice to see Ben. Have a chat with someone. He's a kind lad underneath all that teenage stuff. A bit like Ed back in the day. But turning down cake, not many lads his age would do that. Telling me there were people in the village needed it more. After this, I'll maybe make a start on the extra date and walnut for the shop. Lindy's favourite, Mum says. I never knew that, all these years. Nice to think, though, doing something special for Linda. The thing about baking, I can kind of forget where I am. It takes you out of yourself. You're doing things with your hands and your mind drifts. I like that. I must get those family photos put up. They're all nicely framed and everything, but we ain't got room on the walls for all of them, so we'll have to choose. Which means I have to choose, because Ed thinks they're all nice. They're not. In every one of them, he's got his eyes shut. The coffee table, though, that is perfect. And it has to have pride of place. I love it so much. Thing is, it has character, because it's been upcycled. It's had a life. And then being Swedish green marble with them swirls in it and iron legs shaped like dolphins was absolutely unique. I can't work out yet where's the best place, but... Oh, this could be the shop. No, it's Helen. Now what? Oh no, I didn't know about this. Why didn't I know about this? Weird seeing the tea room so empty. No one in the playground either. Empty. Everywhere's empty. Empty and dead slow. Nothing's happening in the village where nothing ever happens. Playground's smart though. Looks better than it ever did when I was a kid. Better things to do here too. Philip Moss's blokes made a great job of this. And really quick. 
So, Gran got all her cooking skills from Aunt Daphne. Not a real aunt, though. Her mum's cousin or something. But I reckon we're still related somehow. We must be. Kind of second aunt, twice removed or whatever. Never dawned on me Gran had such a tough start as a kid. First her dad dies, then her mum. Then she has to go and live with this Daphne in her lot. The Daphne time. Must have been tough for her. Can't believe she never had a birthday cake till the Daphne time. But you're little, I suppose, and your dad's ill, and no one's going to bother about birthdays. Not till she goes to live with her sort of aunt, and then suddenly, out of the blue, there's this cake, just for her, and it's made with carrot instead of fruit. But the best cake Gran ever had. Of course, we all get cake for birthdays now. Your cake of choice, which for me, happens to be carrot cake. Thanks to Gran. Thanks to Daphne too, in a way. Oh, and a car. I got a car. A carrot-coloured car. Maybe we'll listen to Radio Borsetshire together, Gran and me, if they read out her memories. I wonder who'll get to be their DJ. Oh, please, please, not Mr Guitar Man. Don't let it be Dad. Not Disco Dave, down with the kids. Anything but that. So now I've got Helen's text on my mind on top of everything else. Henry and Kira are supposed to do this VE Day project for school. Teacher posted it ages ago, probably, and I missed it. In by Friday. Kira's never said a word about this. I know she hasn't. Great. Huh. Then Helen texts, how's it going? Which is her kind way of saying, have you remembered? And I text back, all in hand, getting there, juggling emoji, thumbs up. The only honest bit of all that is the juggling. Helen's bound to be on top of it. She manages those kids so well and runs a business. Why can't I be like that? Whenever we're out together, I feel like I'm always the one two steps behind. Helen does poise and I do banana skins. Still, motto for the day. When in doubt, improvise. We'll cobble something by Friday and if not, we'll use cake as a bribe. Laced with rum flavouring. Hi, Emma. You'll never guess what I've just won. For goodness sake, Mum, now what? In, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now, what was the other one Tracy's Roman recommended? The one they do at the National Theatre. Oh, yes, that was it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can feel a difference already. Although I'm not sure how Roman knows what goes on at the National Theatre. As far as I can see, CV hasn't taken him as far as London yet. He tends to be quite Borsetshire-based. Quite theatrical dining experience-based, come to that. Still... Good for him, keeping going, holding on to his dreams, even if it's not exactly his uh, own show on Radio Borsetshire. Oh, my own show. Over 200 applications, Danny said, and they picked me. Shortlisted me with Jolene and I won. My qualities lend themselves naturally to radio when I think about it. Warmth check, sunny disposition check, across the board appeal check, good sense of humour, check again. And then, of course, there's my local knowledge. Radio Borsetshire needs someone who's at the centre of their community. Someone who really knows what's going on under the surface. Well, hello. Oh, no, come on, Susan. (laughs) No need to boast. Oh, Clary, just saying good luck for my debut. Oh, heck, I better get back and get changed. Not that anyone will see me, of course, but it's important for me to feel like a radio presenter, to make an effort, put a bit of lippy on. It'll be fine. Hmm. Wonder if Neil's managed to rig up that red light for the door of the box room. Oh, God, I needed that. 
How can I still be behind Jazza? I've been going hell for leather all morning. I can't go any faster. I'm knackered as it is. Can't let him see that, though. Don't want him to think I'm flagging. Can't believe I agreed to this bet. He knows I'm the better shearer. That's why he's got something to prove. I should just rise above it and tell him I don't care one way or the other. Yeah. Oh, but I do care. And there's ten pints in it and all. Not that there's anywhere to buy pints at the moment. I hate seeing the bull like that, all locked up. Can't wait till all this is over and me and Em can go out for a drink, just the two of us, you know, properly celebrate us getting back together. You know, she don't understand. It's not two grown men squabbling over sheep. It's more than that. Anyway, you started it. I hope she ain't too annoyed about me crashing out as soon as me had hit the pillow last night. I did try and stay up, but I was that shattered. Oh, it's going to be even worse tonight. But I don't want her thinking that I'm taking her for granted. I'm not. I know how lucky I am. Being back with Em and the kids, it's, it's all I ever wanted. Nothing else matters. But I just can't let Jazza win this stupid bet. Yeah, what Em don't get is, it's professional pride, isn't it? Right, let's do this. You ready for round two, Jazz? BBC Radio Borsenshire, with you when it matters. Oh, sorry, are we back to me already? Whoops, I was so caught up listening to Jill's story for VE Day that I forgot I was up next. Silly me. Anyway, um, thank you, Danny, for reading out Jill Archer's story for us. Wasn't that moving? And thank you, Jill, for sending it in. And to Ben, Jill's grandson, who typed it up for her. And Jill told us in her email that writing this story for us has given her a taste for it. So she's going to enlist Ben to type up some more of her childhood memories and turn them into a book. What a sweet boy he is. Lovely to see a teenager willing to help his gran. That'll keep him out of trouble while he's bored off college, won't it? <laughs> Although not all of us have got time on our hands, oh no. When I'm not presenting this show... I'm kept extremely busy as manager of Ambridge Village Shop and Village Postmistress. Oh yes, our little shop and post office has become something of a lifeline to people in the village, a beacon of hope, if you will. As postmistress, I found myself stepping in to provide a vital social service for our community. I was saying to my husband, Neil, only last night... It's never been clearer who keeps the world turning. Us shop workers, up to our elbows in antibacterial gel, the supermarket staff stacking the shelves, delivery drivers and factory workers, carers and teachers. We can't all work from home, can we? No, we're out there every day, tabards on, ready to face the world and whatever it throws at us. And that reminds me, I must do a... What was it Kira said again? Oh yes, a shout out to all our wonderful NHS staff. Now they really are heroes, aren't they? You can keep your overpaid footballers and your fancy architects, can't you? It's midwives and nurses are the ones we should be looking up to. Sorry, what was that, Danny? I can't get to grips with this earpiece. Oh, right, sorry, am I not allowed to? Well, I was only... <clears throat> right, yes, OK. Um, we're going to play a record now, folks. Um, sorry, just a slight technical hitch in the studio here. I'll be back with you in a minute. Sorry, Danny, what were you saying? Oh, he does a rush job, Jazza. His technique's all out of whack. He's got his elbows stuck out so he looks like a chicken. No, he's not a professional shearer. I've been so looking forward to shearing season. 
Me and Jazz having a laugh, two of us in the van, music on, travelling the country, stopping overnight, few beers in the evening. The old flipping world's changed since then. For me too. I mean, when we were talking about it, I was single. Couldn't wait to get away. No, I just want to be at home. Them and the kids. I don't want some stupid knackering competition either. Oh. Em. Oh, don't forget Mum's on the radio. Can't wait to see you later. Oh, damn, I had forgotten. Better have a quick listen before I get started again. And that was Bonnie Tyler with Total Eclipse of the Heart. Now, listeners, I must apologise for the slight fumble earlier. Actually, I'm a tiny bit nervous. But don't worry, I've pulled myself together with the help of a little something I found under the table. (laughs) Oh, I mean uh, the recording desk in my studio at home. (laughs) When I bent down to retrieve my dropped earpiece, what should I find but an unopened box of duty free from mine and my husband Neil's trip to Lanzarote in March? Ron Miel, honey rum. Now, I wouldn't want you to think I'm some sort of lush. In fact, I'm not much of a drinker at all. But this, my husband Neil didn't like it, but I do. And I have to say, a little tot whilst Bonnie was singing has calmed my nerves a treat. I'll just have a little drop more. So, coming up later in the show... Oh, listen to me saying that like a real radio presenter. Coming up, we've got, well, I should say I've got, as it really is just me, myself and I here in my box room. Sorry, studio. Anyway, I'm doing a phone in and today it's going to be all about community. Cheers. Mm. Now, one thing you need to know about me is that community's my middle name. It's what I'm all about. I pride myself on keeping bang up to date with everything that's going on, which is no mean feat, let me tell you. But if I ever get stuck, I've always got my Neil. He's a community man through and through. Very high up in pigs he is, up at Barrow Farm. And he's chair of the parish council, a real pillar of Ambridge. And he's a pillar for me too. Always there, ready with an ear or a cup of tea or a shoulder to cry on or, well, you get the picture. And of course, I'm there for him too. Do what I can to keep him happy. (laughs) In fact, I could tell you a little story about that. (laughs) Are you all sitting comfortably? (laughs) Then I'll begin. It's like the cat that got the cream. It's doing it to wind me up and it's working. Susan Flaming Carter strikes again. I mean, we were neck and neck. I only needed a couple more and I'd have won the day. And then she decides to broadcast her deepest secrets and I'm standing there stunned. And that's all it took. I lost my mojo. Couldn't get it back. Still, day three tomorrow. I could just pull it back enough to swing a draw. A draw's respectable. Especially given my disadvantage in having Susan Carter as a mother-in-law. If I can get a decent night's kip, I should be alright. But that's not going to go down very well with Em. Especially if she knows it's about the competition. It isn't about the competition, really, though, is it? Well, it's not only that. My my back's done in after today. I could sustain a serious injury if I do anything energetic. Now I need to rest it, else I could be laid up and out of action for weeks. Emma wouldn't want to risk that, would she? Maybe I'll be lucky. She'll have other things on her mind after what her mother just let slip on the radio for the old of blooming borsitcher to hear. (laughs) 
should be all right here. No one comes this far down the lane these days, and certainly not at this time in the morning. Oh, oh, that's better. I've escaped Neil's disappointed gaze. What a prize idiot I am. Emma said as much when she ran me last night. I could hear the shame in her voice, and she's right. What must people think? How will I show my face round here again? <sighs> I can't abide gossip. And they will be gossiping, of course they will. Bored out of their minds with nothing to do all day. I mean, this could keep Sabrina Thwaite going for weeks. The thought of her coming into the shop with that smirk on her face. We'll have to move. Yes, we'll leave Ambridge. Neil will have to resign as chair of the parish council, of course. Oh, and church warden. I mean, he can hardly continue with that, can he, now this is out in the open? And Justin all firing from Barrow once where he gets out. Oh, and just when he was finally finding his footing as well. Oh, that Hannah Riley will have a field day. Oh, Susan, what have you done? A glittering radio career stopped in its tracks before it started, nor because of a bottle of honey rum and my big mouth. I got carried away. I got so caught up in my intimate relationship with the listener that I got a bit too intimate. What on earth possessed me? Sorry, Ed. I'll be quicker next time. Not the end of the world, though, is it? Chill out. I don't remember Ed and Jazza being so fast. They're really getting through these sheep. Impressive. I mean, let's face it, they're both a bit past it. <laughs> Go on, boys! I see that Ed's keeping his head down. <laughs> I don't blame him. What is Susan like? Getting tanked on rum on the radio. <laughs> Hilarious. One minute she's giving the recipe for a nice chilli, the next minute she's telling the whole of Borsetshire how certain spices really get Neil in the mood. No wonder Ed's embarrassed. It was bad enough listening to it with Gran yesterday. She wasn't bothered, though. She thought it was a scream. <laughs> Both of us oh. properly laughing, like couldn't stop crying laughing, like we were mates or something. Well, we are mates. Is that weird? I mean, she's not my mate, she's my Gran, obviously. But I actually like... like her. When she was listening to them reading out her wartime story on air, her face, it meant something to her. I could see it. She was so still, remembering it, proud of it, proud that people were listening to this story about something big that happened to her when she was a kid. It was... Yeah, it was cool. Doesn't mean I wanted to be signed up to write a whole book for it, though. Not so keen either on the whole of Borsetshire thinking I'm a sweet boy. Thanks, Gran. Maybe she won't get round to it. She was wicked, though, Susan. And not just because she came out with all that stuff about her and Neil. Fair play to them, anyway. Still at it at their age. W when she did that big shout-out to all the workers keeping the country going, you know, it made me stop and think, actually. Yeah. I I'd hate to be a doctor right now. How do you do that? Go to work every day knowing you're risking your life. And some of them are junior doctors, brand new, just qualified. Like Chloe. Wow. Chloe's out there. Treating patients in hospital. That must be... Wow. I should message her, shouldn't I? No, I can't do that. What, like, hey, I know we're in the middle of, like, a global crisis, but how are you doing? Total cringe. And she wouldn't want to hear from me anyway. Or maybe she would. Maybe she'd really like to know that people are thinking of her. Me, that I'm thinking of her, wondering how she's doing. I mean, I should thank her, shouldn't I? On behalf of all of us, for everything she's doing. Like, hey, how's it going on the front line? Thanks for everything. I mean, not that, obviously. I'll need to work on it. She's still in a mood with me, Emma. Says she isn't, but she is, I can tell. And it's worse, because apparently Ed was in the middle of some important sheep-shearing competition with Jazza... And my bombshell put him off his stride, so Jazza won. And now Ed's in a mood with Emma, and it's all my fault. And as for Neil, he says it's forgiven and forgotten what's done, he's done, but I know what he's not saying. 
We talked about this, didn't we, Susan? When he told me off for gossiping, which was obviously just one big misunderstanding, as if I would gossip. It was very painful for him to have got me so wrong, actually, but I forgave him. I just hope he really has forgiven me deep down for letting slip some of our secrets. Oh, I just wish I could go back in time and not have opened my big mouth. Now, come on, Susan. You just need to hold your head up high and ride it out. Get on with it. That's the thing, though. I can't get on with it. Because as our Tracy would no doubt remind me if I was answering her calls, which I am most certainly not, this has always been my problem. I can't take it. I can't stand people talking about me. I've been here before, that's the trouble. 26 years ago, was it really? Oh, feels like yesterday. Those gates opening and me stepping out into the sun. Neil waiting to take me home to Ambridge, putting on a brave face. I've been so desperate to come home. It's what kept me going during those three long months. I'd been dreaming about hugging the kids, taking them to the park or for a picnic on the village green, drinking a vodka tonic in the ball. Prison. Well, that's proper isolation. You really do start to climb the walls, realise how much you took for granted. And I knew. I knew that everything had changed. I wanted to get on with my life. But I couldn't. Everywhere I went, there were people talking, looking, staring at me. Neil tried to tell me that people were just pleased to see me, wondering how I'd been, and I dare say a few of them were, but still, I couldn't bear it. It took a long while for me to find my feet again, to go out in the village with my head high. Now look, I've ruined it. It was my chance to do something really good for Ambridge, cement my status as a pillar of the community, and what have I done? Squandered it. Let everyone down, not least my poor Neil. He doesn't deserve this. I just rushed into this radio thing, stars in my eyes. To be fair, I was desperate for a distraction from missing Emma and the kids. Mind, Emma's probably pleased she doesn't have to see me at the moment, after all the embarrassment I've caused everyone. Oh, Neil, what is it? Oh, Lord. He looks like he's about to burst a blood vessel. I bet we've had radio balls that you're on the phone to give me my cards. Well, I suppose I'd better face it. Send. Right, that's it. Nothing I can do now. That was all right, I think. Hey, Chloe, how's things? Sorry, stupid question. No things must be pretty mad for you. Hope you're okay. Thinking of you and hoping you're okay. Oh, for God's sake, you've already said that. Sorry if I seemed a bit immature before. Done seven weeks growing up now. Why did I put three exclamation marks? Keep up the good work on the front line, and maybe when all this is over, we can catch up. It'd be nice to see you. Kiss. It's awful. It's the worst text message anyone's ever sent. Keep up the good work on the front line. Oh, God. She is literally never, ever going to call me again. Oh, well. Nothing I can do about it now. Shame, though. I liked Chloe, and I meant it. The things must be really weird and scary for her right now. I mean, it's proper grown-up stuff. She's, like, literally saving lives. People like Chloe, everyone who has to go out to work every day, take that risk, don't know how they do it. What a world, eh, Bess? Yeah, I'm glad I sent it. And she probably won't reply, and that's cool. I'm still glad I told her I'm thinking of her. Yeah. Oh my god, it's her. Get in. Ben, thanks, that's very sweet of you to think of me. Yeah, the world got weird, but I'm doing okay. Good to hear you're growing up. Maybe see you when we're out the other side. Kiss. <laughs> she wants to meet. Result. Hey, I wonder if she likes chilli. All these comments. Pages and pages. 
I must have been sitting here nearly an hour since Neil showed me. Well, let's have another look. What a natural. Can't wait for her next show. And this one. We love Susan's show. So refreshing to hear a mature woman talking frankly and honestly about sex without embarrassment. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, I've always said sex is nothing to be embarrassed about. Just because you're getting on a bit doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to have a bit of fun of an evening or an afternoon come to that. Like I said to Danny, can't help it, Danny. I speak the truth. What did Danny say? Well, Susan, the people of Borsetshire can't get enough of it. I can hardly believe it. Radio Borsetshire want me to do a regular slot. I'm trending on Twitter, me. And it's not just me. <laughs> Bless him. Neil's got his own little army of fans now. Oh, what's this? Let's see. When do we get to meet Neil? Neil, you've got another fan here. Jules from Felpersham thinks you sound like a fox. Oh, he's absolutely made up all these messages from people desperate to know more about him. <laughs> he's pretending to be shy, but I could tell. He went off to put the chicken in the slow cooker with a definite spring in his step. I'll have to do me ear after tea. Get Neil to take me a new edge shop for all the sun photos. I've even had young Ben Archer asking me to email him the chilli recipe in full. <gasps> I just seem to have struck a chord with people. Oh, you know, it just goes to show that my one mistake, really, was not having the confidence in my own abilities. I was born to be an anchor woman and just couldn't see it. Well, not to worry, I've learnt my lesson. I'll never doubt myself again. Oh, hang on. Let's have a little celebration. Where's that Ron Miel? Honey rum to you, Susan Carter, and your radio career. They'll be hanging on your every word. <laughs> there they go, romping through the grass. Well, they're still both kids. They need to romp a bit. That's sweet, though. George waiting for Kira to catch him. He'd hate it if I told him it was sweet, but it is. I don't know, feels like half the week I've been hopping about trying to avoid mum, but it was only Tuesday she did a radio stint. If she phones, I don't know what to say. I certainly don't want to talk about it. Couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was like a cross between a nature documentary and Love Island. Texting's okay. Just send messages about Kira's school project and make no mention of the sex life of grandparents. At least the project takes my mind off it. Got to be in by tomorrow, and it will be. Bit rough round the edges, but it'll be finished. Funnily enough, Mum's actually been quite helpful there. I should have known why Kira never said anything about it. Mum got it straight away, because it's unusual. Kira is normally good at passing on messages about school stuff, but she said nothing about this. I was all bossy mum and going on about how hard it is to get things done when you don't even know you're supposed to be doing half of them and why couldn't she tell us about it? Oh, wish I hadn't. I hate it when she goes all quiet like that. Seems obvious now, of course. People's memories of the war. Ask someone about what they can remember. Of course she would have asked Jo. I can still see her sad little face. I could have kicked myself. I don't know why Ed was so grouchy this morning. Normally he's good first thing. Actually, I think I do know why. He's lost his bet with Jazza and everything's been wrong since. Then he goes into the lounge and there's this crash and he's bashed into the coffee table. No damage done, thank goodness. At least not to the table. I told him it's green and it's got legs in the shape of dolphins. How can you not see it? He wants to know what's wrong with where it was before. Sitting on the settee, holding his shin... Truth is, he walked into it where it was before and all, but I'm not going to remind him about that. It's this bet with Jazza that's got to him. At least I hope that's what it is, because he's in a right strop. And for that act of courage and selflessness, serving men under enemy fire, he was awarded the Military Medal. Thank you to Robert Snell for that moving story about his dad who, as Robert says, was in the Royal Army Medical Corps. 
What a very brave bunch of people they were in both World Wars and beyond. More memories from those days later, I hope. This is Susan Carter, coming to you on Radio Borsetshire. Live from my studio in the home my husband Neil and I built ourselves here in lovely Ambridge. Now I think of it, you can go to our village website right now and see some beautiful pictures done specially to go with the Jill Archer memories we read out on Tuesday. They're well worth a look. And quite by chance, the artist happens to be my talented granddaughter, Kira Grundy. Pleased I could help with your school project if you're listening, Kira. Gets a gold star from me, love. And I'm sure it'll do very well. Let me know, or maybe your mum will, if she's not too busy. Now, what next? Oh yes, Um, we move on to listeners' questions, or Q&A with Susan C. From Felpersham to Borchester, BBC Radio Borsetshire. We've had a good few queries from my fans and I've printed some off. Beginning with this one from a Mr A of Churchham in far-flung North Borsetshire. (laughs) Dear Susan, he writes, I was very impressed by that special recipe you shared with us on Tuesday. Have you got any more like that? Well, Mr A, I can reveal that I have, only there's very tight broadcasting regulations with regard to certain sorts of material, so I have to tread very carefully. After all, I don't want to find myself on feedback, do I? Now, the next question is from someone who calls herself Mrs P of Atherton. She writes here, Dear Susan, can you tell me, are some pigs posher than other pigs? Well, Mrs P, I checked this one with someone I know who has executive status in pig management and he tells me, yes, many pigs are highly aware of their social position. It's an indication of their intelligence. This one comes from someone calling themselves the Holliton Honker. Dear Susan, how do you manage to keep talking so fluently? Do you have to have special training? Well... I have had special training, as a matter of fact, Mr Honker, yes. It's called taking an interest in people. If you're interested in people, you'll always have something to say for yourself. A little free advice for you there. Now, a question from me to you. If you remember, I asked you to let me know the sort of things you were doing to pass the time while you're stuck indoors. And this one comes in from a Richard and Sabrina, at least I think it's from them, of Ambridge. Yes, here we are. We have become very keen on devising board games. One of our favourites requires little more in the way of equipment than a sturdy kitchen table and a whisk. Well, I don't think we need to go into the details. Let's just say board games are a good idea and they don't all need a kitchen table. Which reminds me, I just wanted to say a word or two of apology to my wonderful family, to Emma and Christopher, and especially to my lovely Neil. If I have in any way fallen below the high standards you have come to expect from me in the last few days, well, I am very sorry. That's the last thing I wanted. You mean so much to me. Radio Borsetshire. Oh, Mum. Nearly didn't bother to listen. I never know what she's going to say next. Stress or what? That was lovely, though. Really nice. Except, of course, it reminds everyone of what she said in the first place. So thank you very much, Mum. I really do appreciate what you say. Only can we now drop it, please. Right, better get on while the kids are still out. Plans for coffee table location. Of course, I'm lucky. I can spread out a bit here. I keep thinking of poor Tracy, stuck indoors with that lot. Brad and Chelsea lumbering about in only that tiny garden. And Brad at that old knees and elbows stage. Normally, Tracy'd have her cricket. And now she's been made captain, things were bound to get a bit feisty. Except she's captain of no one at the moment. No players, playing no games. So where's my coffee table actually going to go? 
I don't like it where it is. It's completely wrong. Because you don't get the full impact when you come in the door. And you need to. It's the centrepiece. So with this one cut to scale, I can see where it fits. Find the perfect place. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. It's got class, but it's more than that. Oh, Ed, you rescued it for me. Secretly saved it when I thought I had to get rid of it. So it has to have pride of place. I think he cheered up a bit by the time he went off to work. Only now he wants to have a chat. Can we have a chat, he says. Sounds kind of fun, eh? I mean, making an appointment to chat to your wife. I'm surprised Helen never got that project done with Henry. Too much going on in the dairy, she says. She's the one who reminded me, but she never got it done herself. I can't help feeling a little bit smug about that. Except Helen's not stressed, not at all. I'd be sending messages to the teachers, saying sorry all over the place, but I don't know. Maybe there's something cool about not bothering with excuses. I wonder what he wants to chat about. Ed. Because to make an appointment, like a bank manager or something, I mean, you don't do that if you've got anything nice to say, do you? I keep wondering about it. Have I been pushing things along too quick? I can do that, I know I can. Maybe he's feeling hemmed in or something. No, I'm not going to think about it. I'm trying out my little coffee table cutout. I suppose I put the settee near the kitchen door and the coffee table in front of it sideways on. See how that looks. Well, I'll be signing off in a little while. I hope you've enjoyed today's slice of village life and the bits and pieces of music between my words and meditations. I'd just like to thank all you listeners for welcoming me into your homes, from bustling Felpersham all the way to remote North Borsetshire. I feel like I've been right there with you sharing a cuppa. A word of thanks too to wonderful Radio Borsetshire for asking me. It's a real privilege. There's no county like ours, is there? Especially our little Ambridge corner. I love it here. The slope of the fields and the clumps of woods in little valleys and the am winding through. And soon the lanes will fill with the scent of woodbine and meadow sweet. What I love best of all, though, is the people. They can be as crotchety and cantankerous as anyone anywhere, but when folk need a hand, they will step up and offer it. We see it time after time round here, and it always fills me with pride. So... That's me for today, then. Oh, yes, Danny. Oh, my playout music. Sorry, everyone, I almost forgot. (laughs) I've got one more request to play. This comes from a husband to his wife, partly to say sorry, don't ask me why, and partly to tell her he loves her very much. He says she'll know what this means. It's Lush Life by Zara Larson. Goodbye and God bless. By the time he came back for his dinner, I couldn't think of anything else. I tried working on my plans, but I couldn't concentrate. Then I heard his boots on the step, and there he was. I said I'd do him a sandwich, but he said no, not just yet. George and Kira were having baked beans and larking about, so me and Ed came out here and sat down on the step. Same step where i just heard his boots. And he looked pale, like there was real gloom hanging over him, and he could hardly bring himself to speak. He said, Em, I don't think this is working. And I went cold inside. And he looked at me and he said, It's the coffee table. I really can't stand that coffee table. I was stunned I couldn't work it out. And then he burst out laughing. Sorry, Em, he said, It's too big and it's too ugly and I can't live with it. Then we went inside and put the radio on and there was Mum, just about to play Lush Life. Which is what we danced to on our first anniversary. And he laughed again, and I cried. I suppose that sorts out where the table goes, out the door. And I don't care, because it'll clear a space. So maybe me and Ed can have our dance after all.
I find quantum mechanics confusing to do. Hello, I'm Brian Cox. And I'm Robin Ince, and the Infinite Monkey Cage is back for a new series, and we are dealing with so many fantastic ideas, and even better, no one that we've asked has got an alibi for getting out of doing the show. So in this series, we have got, well, the first episode alone, we talk about the end of the universe with Brian Green, Katie Mack, Eric Idle, and Steve Martin. Yes, you heard that. Steve Martin and Eric Idle are joining us. Anyway, enjoy the new series. We're having a fantastic time making it. Brian's particularly enjoying it because he's hundreds of miles away from me and they're just using technology to create some sense of proximity. That's the great thing about it all. That's the Infinite Monkey Cage on BBC Sounds now. Well, not now. I mean, there's no unique definition of now in physics. Simultaneity is relative. It's on BBC Sounds, anyway. Unless you've got that Robin Inson, Professor Cox. I'd leave that poor pussy alone in its box. That cat may be as dead as a rat you can wage in the infinite monkey.